Welcome to the Parent Matters Podcast, where we help you navigate the ever-changing landscape of parenting and equip you with tools to confidently parent your children. I'm Susan Stutzman, and today we're talking about how to help your child transition to life after a pandemic. And to help me do that, I've asked Dr. Karen Freed to join me. Karen holds a doctorate in psychology as well as a master's degree in both human development and in clinical psychology. She's a licensed MFT and has practiced educational therapy and psychotherapy for over 15 years and is the founder and director of the K&M Center in Santa Monica, California. Welcome to the show, Karen. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's so nice to see you here and get to connect, even though we're, we're from different states. Even though we're from different states, we both work with children and families, yep. and there's so much that has gone on. And um, before we talk a little bit about how to help kids, can you tell um, our listeners, which are mostly parents and caregivers, um, a little bit about yourself, um, about your work, about um, what you're passionate about, and um, you know what we should know about you um, before we begin to explore how we can help our kids. Sure, I'm so happy to do that. Um, so f- first, uh, if I, uh, knowing that I'm speaking to parents and caregivers, I am one myself. Uh, I have two grown, ch- well, actually they're all grown now, so two <laughs> children that I inherited through marriage, which has been just amazing gifts in my life that are 28 mm. and 30. Um, and then I have a 20-year-old who's a college student who uh, finished her, had a gap year and finished her first year of college online. And then a rising senior in high school who may actually get to visit colleges that... woo uh, to. <laughs> Right. Yeah, exactly. So um, I've sort of been right in there with everyone else. Uh, that I've been working with who have been trying to navigate this parenting thing that we've all been doing during this time of a pandemic. Yeah, yeah, which is, which has been really tricky because, uh, you know, it's not like there's a one size fits all on not only how to navigate being a parent, but also, you know, now we have all of these different experiences that have come out of being in a global pandemic depending on where you live in the world, how it's affected your family, the, you know, people who, um, you know, the different rules and uh, regulations that the government, depending on where you are, has put in place. Um, And yeah, I would love to just hear, you know, your experience um, as a mental health professional working with families Tell me a little bit about what you've found to be helpful um, with children, especially during this uh, this season. Um, And yeah, I mean, I'm curious, but, you know, even actually what I'd love to do before we do that is to talk about um, one of the reasons why we met. And that is that we both um, love gestalt therapy (laughs) and uh and how and, and I'd love for you to just describe to the listeners what the gestalt process is um, so they can kind of understand so that you, they know the lens in which you'll be speaking from, because I don't think that all of our listeners particularly know what that that is. Right. Right. Sure. Absolutely. So um, years ago when I was a, a new child therapist, I met someone whose name is Violet Oaklander. And she wrote a book that um, became just a seminal text for child therapists uh, in the Mm -hmm. U.S. and really throughout the world. And it just talks about how to be there for children in this very humanistic way uh, that Mm -hmm. is also very powerful and healing for them. And she wrote this book in 1978. She's now 94 and um, so myself and some others who've known her for a very long time started a foundation to continue her work 
So when the pandemic started, I had been doing training of child therapists as she did. Uh, her mm-hmm. book's been translated into about 17 different languages in as many countries. I wrote an article called Just For Now, How to Apply This Work, Working With Children in a Crisis, which we all clearly mm-hmm. were in. And yeah. because her book is already an international source for uh, therapists and families and teachers. I did this thing called a Zoom call, which was pretty new to me in March yeah. of 2020. <laughs> and uh, we were joined on that first call by about six countries. And wow. it, we talked about using telehealth and how to help families navigate this time that Mm -hmm. the word unprecedented has been overused, but not then. Then it Mm -hmm. really fit. It was unprecedented what we were going through. Yeah. Yeah, it was unprecedented. And I love that you did, that you named your calls just for now, because um, I think, you know, that's one thing that I'm struck by is that um, a lot of times as parents, we don't necessarily know how to help our children. Yes to process or to be with them or to show up because we don't know how to explain it. And sometimes simplicity is a really great way to start just for now. This is just for now. The masks yeah. are just for now, right? right? The, 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 um, the social distancing is just for now. This isn't yeah. a, uh, something that is going to um, be forever. It's just for now. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when I wrote the article, um, it we didn't know how long it was going to last. And so now that um, we're still, we've had 22 just for now calls. So it's a little ironic uh, that it is mm-hmm. just for now, but it can be a mindset. Because I think mm-hmm. if we've learned nothing else about how we can relate to our work situation, our own children and families. We don't know anything else except what we're go- what we're experiencing right now. Mm-hmm. And I like that because I think that you know, to me, there's in um, like in understanding human humans or the humanistic perspective from a Gestalt framework. Um, I don't, I, you know, if you have. Uh, if you have more to add, please, please chime in. But I, I would sure. say that my, ex- my experience is that it's this I thou relationship, right? So that when I'm with a child um, or with anyone, that it's that we are on, that we have mutual respect for each other. It's not I'm better than you or they're better yes. than me, but there's yes. this mutual respect. There's this sense of we're working towards becoming congruent. So right. that we are, that our self um, fully shows up instead of trying to be someone that we aren't and, and really working in what has happened to us and, um, and, and being okay with being who we are. Um, and I think that, um, as parents, and I know that there's more to, yes, the Gestalt process. Um, I would say the other thing is to, uh, be fully present. So there's this contact contact or contacting aspect, right? Not yes. just be thinking about what will happen, what will happen, but it's like, yeah, just for now, this is the thing. So I, I don't know, I was drawn to that. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted you to come on the podcast and share, you know, from this perspective, right. how do we show up for our kids and help them through right. the pandemic? And then I found out that you wrote this fantastic little book <laughs> <laughs> and have so many resources. Thank so. I know I'm talking too much, but you tell us, yes, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, how to navigate this and how to help your children um, with life after the pandemic. Right. Well, one of the, one of the ways that I talk to parents um, and, and myself as a parent is when you're in a crisis, it's time to really evaluate what is the most important thing that you need to worry about. And in that really initial time of uncertainty, it was our health, safety, and security. That was the most important. And probably we'd have agreement on that worldwide. And I know because Mm -hmm. that just for now call ended up connecting about 30 
countries at a time. Wow. So we were learning from every continent except Antarctica. And I'd love to have someone from there if, if, uh, <laughs> if they would join. If someone from Antarctica, yes, is on this, is listening to this podcast, please join. <laughs> so it was something that we all had in common. And so I talked about having this must concentrate list, health, safety, and security. And then what I called a so what list. And things on the so what list, actually you would have never thought you'd put there. And it could be your children's grades. Maybe you're a family where mm -hmm. That's a value of yours, which is scholastic achievement. And, and I support mm -hmm. that and, and have that value myself. But during this time, that for me was on my so what list. Um, what my kids wore, unless there was any sort of requirement by the school for their school day that was on Zoom, mm -hmm. that was on the so what list. Um, mm -hmm. that's sort of on my so what list anyway, but, um, those are, <laughs> th those are, those are some of the things screen time. So mm. screen time, how many questions, Susan, do you get about, oh my gosh, how am I going to regulate my child's use of screen time? Well, that became all the time, right? It became a yeah. lifeline though. Their, their mm -hmm. social, their academic, their, mm -hmm. um, every our work went on mm -hmm. a screen that went yeah. on we need to talk about transitioning away from that for sure mm -hmm. somewhat but uh, yeah. to be kind to parents for the amount of screen time that we all needed to have during this time yeah 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 I know so I love that so wait so you had the you had the so what list and what was the first one called must do what must what you, do what you have to what you have to deal with and then the mm. so what the mm -hmm. and and to really when we're talking about the i thou relationship between us and the child clients we work with for me i've always prioritized the i thou relationship in a non-judgmental way with parents it's the hardest mm. job we ever have I've yeah. been doing this before I was a parent, and I always stayed very humble. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my world's kind of collided during this time as a parent and a professional because I was on Zoom, and yeah. I hadn't figured out where I was going to be in my house um, <laughs> at, during this time of just remote telehealth. And my kids, who were supposed to be away but had to come home because of the pandemic, we're outside mm. the room making all this noise. So mm -hmm. this never happens. I'm usually at my office. So without muting my thing, I'm and, and who am I talking to? A parent and a child. I'm doing a parenting mm. session. My kids are yelling outside the room. So I said, one minute. And so without <laughs> muting, I go out and I said, can you guys please be quiet? I'm working. <laughs> So I come back and of course they heard my conversation <laughs> and I said, well, this is the parent expert who is navigating this. Mm -hmm. So we were sort of all going through this together. There certainly yeah. wasn't a hierarchy at all during this right, time. Right, right. And I think that I, I love that you mentioned that because I think that, you know, even in my work, um, there's this, this, you know, it's similar to what you do um, I know there's different aspects, but I think you're right. There's this collision. You know, I'm a parent of, of elementary school children, and yeah. and there's this collision of like you have to, like, l actually, like, do this with all of your clients' parents, and like we're working on this together, and yeah. it's not it's not necessarily going to be pretty. And there were times when I when I just lost it and. And I had to give myself grace and talk about, wow, this is really hard um, yeah. and, and practice what I preached, right? Like regulate, 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 and then go back and repair. <laughs> yes, yes. But it was yes. hard. That's it was right. really hard because there That's weren't right. those, you know, safe places to go get out and to be um, mm -hmm. rejuvenated or filled back up so that you can come back and actually have healthy um, and helpful um, interactions with the people that you love. Hundred percent, hundred percent. One of the parts of this model is to 
help children, and in this case, I would talk about parents, have a strong sense of self. So how do you mm. feel about yourself as a parent, our strengths and our weaknesses? Um, mm -hmm. And particularly during this time, we've, we've confronted both, right? We've mm -hmm. had some heroic <laughs> times that we can reflect back upon. And then, you know, you mentioned, I, I haven't met that parent that hasn't had some sort of breaking point during this time, depending mm -hmm. on our situation, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. the other thing is to have contact, which is to be present, uh, you brought this up, with our intellect. So how are we thinking about things these mm -hmm. days? You know, and our kids have had to have Zoom school, right? Many, most, at least for some mm -hmm. of the pandemic. So that was in a lot of cases really compromised. We yeah. have to think about being present in our body. And so mm -hmm. if we're on a screen, I know I sat for six months before I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get back to exercising because I was on all these Zoom calls. Yeah, um, yeah right. And so then our senses and our mm -hmm. emotions which because we were thrown into a crisis, that word regulation really fits here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm curious, you know, I'd love for you to share some of your favorite practical ways that parents can help their children as we're transitioning. And before sure. we do that, I, I just kind of want to say, you know, for my own self, like as a parent, like thinking about how, tricky this can be because all of a sudden as parents when things like states and um, schools and um, sporting events and all of these things have begun to open up it feels like yay we get to do this we're going to put our kids back in school we're going to do this we're going to have um, people over and and I personally like all of a sudden I'm like exhausted right and I, right. And I know I've been seeing more and more meltdowns in my children. I'm having to like tune into them. What are some practical ways that we can kind of bridge and not just necessarily go back to everything that was, but help our children to transition more into, you know, socializing, yeah. being with people, but also yeah. knowing how to pulse in and out, if you will, like, yeah. and be be present. And how can we do that as parents? I know that's a loaded mm -hmm. question, but practically, no. you know, <laughs> no, I think, I think that we're all facing exactly what you're, what you're um, bringing up. And, and when you talk about seeing meltdowns with kids, uh, if this is a, if people are listening from the U S there's many people who are in a pretty good place relative to where we started with the pandemic. If you're listening mm -hmm. from another country, that is not necessarily a given at all because there is a big disparity in terms of uh, feelings about vaccinations, types mm -hmm. of vaccinations. It's not a political discussion at all, but we're not. Right. There are some people that aren't coming out of the pandemic yet. They're still right. in various lockdowns. So for the people in the U.S. who may be, one thing is to acknowledge the children, what we know about children with grief is they often mm. have delayed responses relative mm. to adults' responses. So we may be, yes, tired, sort of still feeling the effects of the transition, but they may, I've had children that I've known who have seemed fine in the pandemic, and now they're struggling. And you mm. think, well, it's such a relief. You can see your friends now. But they're sort of processing at a different rate. And so mm. it's confusing parents thinking, oh, is there something going on now? Not necessarily. Okay. Well, and, and can you just flesh that out a little bit um, developmentally? Why, why do children grieve um, at a slower pace than adults? Well, developmentally, and again, depending on the age, um, and we're talking every age has gone through this, but mm -hmm. um, developmentally, the all the aspects of the pandemic, they experienced different than our than we did. Um, mm -hmm. And so 
they're just realizing maybe they're not even triggered about what they went through until they actually see their friends. And then Mm. somewhere in their being, they're realizing, oh, I didn't see them all this time, but they were Mm -hmm. more in the moment. Mm -hmm. Whereas we're thinking, oh, our poor children that aren't seeing anyone. So that's just one example of that. And they have an overall slower processing speed than adults do. That's, that's so helpful. That's so helpful to remember. And also, I, I, you know, just as you were saying this, I just, it just like jogged my memory of, of course, it's like, if I even as an adult, right, if I forgot that I ate something that I loved, and years later, I had it, I might bring back a wonderful memory or a hard memory or something, right? Um, Part of my senses, of course, seeing your friends for the first time, And, you know, would bring back, wait, you know, not only like I did lose this, but all I would imagine it's like a double sided coin, um, specifically from the kids that I've worked with. It's like, when are they going to when am I going to lose them again? Yeah, yeah, right, right. And so there's there's one thing there. There's a number of things I'll I'll, I'll mention, too, that um, one is to deal with stress It's sort of, I know, Susan, you're writing a book about mindfulness, so this exercise may very well be in it or referenced. Uh, It's about using the senses to have this be more of a grounding exercise to work on self-regulation. And it's where if, if they're comfortable with this, if a parent's comfortable with this, close your eyes, take a breath, and think about your home, because mm. many of us have been home, five mm-hmm. things you can see, right? In your mind's mm-hmm. eye, if your eyes closed, what comes to mind mm-hmm. about five things you can see? Take a breath. Four things you can hear. What are the sounds of your home, of your space mm. that you've been in? Uh, three things that you can touch. Two smells of your home and one taste. Mm. So um, this is a very common mindfulness exercise, but I use it for a whole family because what's great is that everyone's going to have different responses. Mm -hmm. And when they're when they're shared, that's sort of interesting, too. Oh, we all are thinking of that one taste of this time. Maybe it was baking bread. (laughs) <laughs> a lot of us do that. <laughs> um, whatever it is. I but did. it sort of centers and grounds you. Um, mm-hmm. So that is that is one uh, exercise. And then what are the senses that you're getting in touch with of school? If For the kids that have already gone back to school? Or what could they imagine? Mm-hmm. So they're grounding themselves using that presence of being there. Oh, right. I remember. Or they're, they've already been there. There's mm-hmm. a lot of different so, sounds. So, so tell me how this would work. Like, you know, a child is going from first grade on Zoom to um, being in school partial day, yeah. then going for full day, and then right. they are done, you know, and now they're kind of anxious to go to second grade. How would you have, how would you tell a parent to use this throughout the summer in grounding themselves as they're thinking about the transition into second grade, not knowing if they're going to ha- be vaccinated, if they're going to be able to wear, uh, if they have to wear masks still, if there's going to yeah. be, you know, parameters, etc. cetera. Yeah, yeah. What would this look like? So, um, I'm going to talk about that. But when you have this sort of anxiety that's pretty normal about transitions, but let's just elevate it, you know, exponentially now because of everything that uh, kids have been through as far as a transition. So Mm -hmm. I work with the polarities on that. And I will have a child uh, either draw a picture or think of something that they're really worried about. And so, you know, 
I had one six-year-old who was worried about that transition and she drew a picture about everything she sat about. And then without being edited, I had her tell her mom everything she was sad. She called it sad, but we know that mm -hmm. sad can have so many different feelings with it. Everything yeah. she was worried about as far as the transition, no editing, keep asking her for more things, more things, more things until she's done, until she says mm -hmm. everything. And you might learn something by giving your child permission just to, just to say it. Um, and then when they're done, say, okay, I want a picture, I want an image, anything about what you're looking forward to because you're looking forward to something. Mm -hmm. And um, again, once they often, once you've given them the opportunity to say everything they're worried about, they're more open. And then in the case of this six-year-old, she said, oh, well, I did meet that teacher. Um, I know that my cousin had her and she's really nice. And this friend of mine that I haven't seen for a long time is going to be in my class. And because I'm going to be in first grade, I get the bigger playground. Oh, mm. and then sort of they can experience what, what we know to be true, which is these polarities. So that's mm -hmm. when you brought that up. That's something I commonly do. Um, but, oh, that's really helpful. Yeah. Uh, the senses. So I would imagine, what do you want it to be like? Let's go visit and get in touch with it. What do you see here that's been different? The visual of Zoom is so different than the visual in person. It can be a little bit jarring to the senses. I mm -hmm. know for me, when I'm seeing people now, it's like, okay, that's just a lot of people. I'm used to this, what we're doing. So yeah, and <laughs> I, I'm adjusting, right? Yeah. And you don't have to, and you don't necessarily, I mean, there is this focusedness, but a lot of people, kids in, you know, as well as adults are, you're able to turn off your camera or just like, ugh, for a second, you know, like. That's right. <laughs> and, and they should, which, which has been, they should, but you can't do that in person. Mm -hmm. And that's, right. that's the good news, I think. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's also uh, can be overwhelming. So what are the sounds of where you're going? What are the sights? Mm -hmm. What are the, lunch is going to be different. So the tastes are mm -hmm. different. Certainly the smells yeah. of school are different than what they've mm -hmm. been like at home. Totally. And so that's how your bleach, bleach, bleach. <laughs> Yeah. No, that's really, that's really helpful because, and I think even as you mentioned it, like thinking about um, my own children, um, you know, they didn't allow parents into school. Um, and so even like going and visiting, you can still go look in the windows or you can, or you can visualize it. And I know it's not the same, but it is different than Zoom, right? You can visualize yeah. it. And as yeah. things, and as things get closer, um, Hopefully, there will be a little bit more um, ability to go into mm -hmm. places. And I think that right. especially for a really anxious child, I know working with um, kiddos, social workers or um, school administrators to help with your ch with children that are really, really struggling to be able to have a tour or to be able to um, begin to do this so that we have these tools of grounding and regulating. And I think that that speaks to this you know, being in contact and, and helping them to find congruence instead of being like, it's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's okay. Just enjoy your summer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, Which I uh, want my children to do and is not a bad course. hope, but, but helping them. I love the, too, the polarity exercise of, yeah, 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 just sitting in your sadness, but then also knowing what am I looking forward to? So holding that hope for your child. Well, that's sort of um, what this opportunity is. The other thing is to remember this past, present, and future. And mm. um, I have some apps that people can use, and maybe you can share the um, the URLs, the you know the website, yes. so that people can use. They them. will be linked. Yes, they'll be linked uh, below. So <laughs> parents can use them, and I'm hearing from parents using them. So mm -hmm. what? 
this is sort of an interesting one for, for using, there's a puppet app or actual puppets because you're at home with your child. So you can mm-hmm. um, have your child pick a puppet for the past, which is before the pandemic. Pick a mm. puppet when you found out about the pandemic and pick a puppet for that transition outside of the pandemic. Mm. And mm-hmm. um Using Gestalt principles, you give them a voice, and puppets are, lend themselves really well to that. So I actually had a 15-year-old uh, girl do this, and mm. when she was the past puppet, she was hearing from the present, and the present said, mm. well, I'm in this pandemic, and it's really weird and awful, and I don't get to see anyone. And I said, oh, well, what does the past think of this? And the past puppet said, what? What's a pandemic? Are you kidding me? You mean I won't be seeing anyone and I'll be having school Mm. on a computer? And it was so interesting to have her, for her, and to watch this, witness this, Mm -hmm. so that she had this perspective. There was a time we didn't even know about this. We couldn't even conceive of it. And then there is that future part that kids can get in touch with um, Mm -hmm. for looking back on this, looking back on this. What Mm -hmm. what did we gain from this and what got taken away? And Mm -hmm. the future can reflect for us uh, on that. Yeah, no, that's that's so helpful. I know, um, you know, part of the way that I... Um, help to regulate myself is uh, is through watching funny things. And I know that on YouTube, there were a lot of people that <laughs> that created, like uh, comedians created some yes. version of like, you know, your past talking to your present. But I, yes. I love the aspect of having the three, right? Yeah. Like the, and, and also helping a child to begin to use their words, because I know like there is a, there is a helpful, um, ability to be able to laugh and to see someone else talk about this or their experience or, you know, these two parts talking, but it's also, it's, it also is important to remember that, that have allowing your child to have their own experience and their own voice to be able to do this is really important. And, and I love what you mentioned. And so I'm just going to tell our listeners real quick, um, about this resource that you were talking about, um, Dr. Fried and her team has created many ways to interact with children. And, you know, after now that we have been um, all utilizing computers and tablets um, in different ways and m- more frequently, sometimes children are, um, they tend to have an easier time talking about things um, with the use of technology. And um, one of the things that can be really helpful and um, that is something that as uh, people we do is to project our experience onto things <laughs> or to yeah. objects um, yeah. and sometimes uh, talk through them, right? So um, in therapeutic ways with children, um, we utilize things like um, sand and miniature objects so that we can create worlds or we can cr- show through that, uh, you know, something, a story, because some kids don't like to draw, right? Um, Some kids like to use puppets. Some kids um, like to act out things in dollhouses or in barns or or different different types of things. And so Dr. Fried and her team has created many ways to interact with children in projective ways online to get them talking about their experiences and to process feelings about big changes they've all gone through due to the recent global pandemic. But it's also just a great tool to use to talk to your kids. So if you're interested in learning more, um, I would encourage you to go to her website. It's www.oaklandertraining.org. And you can find free online resources for an online sand tray you can use with your kids, an online dollhouse, online puppet show, projective cards, which are helpful um things as even as parents to utilize like what do you see what do you hope what do you <laughs> and um yeah, they're fun and the link will be below in the in the um uh show notes but i karen before you um before we end this podcast because i could talk to you for a long long time but i want to be mindful same, of your time same, by the way. Yes. <laughs> but um you you wrote this book um and i 
I just want people to be able to see it. Um, Transition to life after a pandemic. And it is on Amazon. I find that, you know, some of what you shared um, in even today, some helpful, tangible exercises that you can do with your children are um, in here in different ways as well. One thing that I know I'm going to do um, is on page 14, I, I was like, I'm going to go and buy some clay for my kids and do this, yeah. actually. Yeah, um, is wonderful. <laughs> but I was, but even, you know, if you have even younger kids, you can use Play-Doh, you can, you Absolutely. know, what, what have you. But it's yeah. talking about, like, you know... Um, Again, that closing your eyes, right? Uh, that experience um, and talk about a feeling and can you um, imagine that time and make an object that represents the feeling yeah. out of the clay. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, just one of the things that I want to convey to our listeners um, is that as parents, sometimes it can feel like we have to have all of these really um, important conversations or know what to do or, um, but showing up, being present, contacting with our children and allowing them to share, just like you mentioned, Karen, with like, what are you, what makes you sad actually is cathartic, is really helpful for processing and helps them to begin to integrate experiences much better than having like a, you know, a, so, you know, some some other type of perfect interaction with a parent. And so I just, I really appreciate this book with all these fun, but also really important activities that parents can do as well as um, therapists. But like, but specifically, if you're a parent looking for things to do to give your child yeah. prompts, and you can do them as a parent too, because Let's face it, as parents, it's tricky also transitioning. (laughs) Oh, for sure. And I have lots of feelings. I think I need some clay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, for sure. This, um, the training that I do is, uh, and I do parent workshops too, uh, with the same materials that I use with children and they just get this you know, feeling of fun and, oh, I haven't drawn in so long. I haven't used clay in so long. Mm. And um, it's very freeing. That's part of why I like doing this work is I like the experiential part of it. Which I think is so helpful. Uh, Karen, tell me, um, as well as the people um, uh, that are listening today, how can um, anyone get in touch with you or find out more about um, your work, your parent workshops, et cetera, um, point us in the direction of you. Uh, well, um, you have my email, right? So, uh, I do. Yes. <laughs> info. <laughs> I think it's going to be shared, <laughs> but info at oaklandertraining.com or Karen Freed at KNM center.com. Those are two, uh, ways, um, that people can reach me and be happy to hear from anyone. Awesome. Yeah. And, um, and just for our listeners, um, the Oaklander training center has a lot of training and different, um, ways that you can equip yourself as a parent. And if you're in Santa Monica, you can always go and get personalized That's right. That's right. <laughs> therapeutic <Well>, interventions. <laughs> yes, exactly. Soon I can hopefully have people come. I For my trainings, I would have people come to mm. remember those days. when, when we Oh, I remember to... those days. <laughs> yes, but it, it should happen so. again. Yeah. Yes, but, that's but right. It's just for now. Just for now. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. That's right. Well, Karen, thank you so much for joining me. And to all of you listeners, thank you so much for joining and for listening. If you found this conversation useful, please subscribe to this podcast and join me again next time for the Parent Matters podcast. And remember, don't parent alone. The topics discussed on this podcast should be considered a matter of personal opinion. They do not reflect professional advice. If you or your child is in need of mental health counseling support, please search out a licensed counselor in your area.